So welcome to the first in a series of um, videos that we'll be doing to help build confidence with um, quilting. I'm going to be starting off with um, just plain sort of squares patchwork and different ways to quilt those and we'll discuss the marking out etc and it just gives you practice to be able to build up your confidence so that when it comes to doing a bigger quilt that you know that you can do it. I've purposely kept these at a size that you've got enough there to get into the rhythm of it, to get some practice, but also that it's not too big to be overwhelming. You can use scraps uh, to do it, so it's just patchwork squares, we're using 16 um, patchwork squares, four and a half inches. Um, layered up with some backing fabric, um, some cotton wadding. Um, I've layered it using some 505 spray and pins. I'll take the pins out as I go. So this is um, the block that I'm doing. Um, I've just used up some uh, fabric that was sent to me. Um, so that's why it's pink. I don't normally go pink, but um, I'm going to use it up. So what we're going to be doing on this one, as with all quilts, you start in the centre and you're going to be working out. Um, it's good practice to get in. It's not so critical when it's this size, but when you come into a big quilt, it just helps to move the fabric out to the sides. We're going to be doing inside our seam lines. Now let me just check. This one isn't too bad actually, but sometimes um, our seams don't always match up. So doing these four square um, blocks as well is going to give you plenty of piece in practice to get your joints. So these ones are pretty good. So this would actually be a good one that you could do with quilts in the ditch, but sometimes it can be off. I think I put one somewhere um, and it hadn't aligned up properly. And when you're quilting in the ditch, those mistakes are accentuated. Um, and also to keep it in the ditch, it can be um, quite a, a skill to that, um, which when you're just starting off, it's not always possible to do. Saying that, that's the way I started because for me I thought it was the easier way of doing it. But another nice way is to use our seams here as a guide and we're going to just stitch inside them. So I've changed my walking foot. We're going to trim these down afterwards. Right, get my needle down. And I'm just going the width of my foot inside these um, seam lines. Going to do it horizontally and vertically. So you could do one with just horizontal, uh, horizontal stripes or vertical stripes. Um, but if you do the, them both ways, you end up with a little square in the corners. So I've moved to my walking foot and I'm just using the width of the foot. You could go up to half an inch in from here. And I'm just going to lengthen my stitch bit. So for this method, there's no marking out required. And you're just following along. This seamless side is just sitting along the edge of that foot. Any pins that come in the, in the way, and we're just going to take them out. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to do this side. So be aware that your walking foot may not be the same size on either side. This one looks pretty symmetrical, but I had one where it was narrow one side to the other. So always make sure that you're sewing in the direction. If you're using the edge of your foot as a guide, that you're using the same side. And I'm just going to come back up to the side now. So 
So when it comes to your speed. Go at the speed where you're comfortable and you're able to control your distance. So for these videos, tend to put a nice steady space just to make sure that you're able to see. I'm going to come make sure that's out of the way. I'm going to come and do this next one now. Now what you can do with this as well, you could be, the length of your foot, well my walking foot, is enough, so there's a slight discrepancy there. But because the thread is fairly light and it matches in, actually it's a pair of cream, um, so it doesn't really show up as much and it, it tends to blend into the fabrics um, so it's a nice choice that's what one of the things that you want to be thinking about is your thread choices if you're using something that's really dark contrast to your fabric it will show up any imperfections more. So I tend to choose my fabrics and my threads with that in mind. So because I'm using my foot as a guide, I'm just looking at the edge of my foot and making sure that It follows the edges of that fabric and it means it's a lot more accurate than if you're watching the needle. There we go, so that's two. I've got one more to do on this way. I'll be alright if I stop sticking my hands on the pins. Doing blocks these sizes um, is great because it's a lot easier and gentler on your body to, to manipulate. So it's not too big that it doesn't fit under the throat of your machine. perfect size for doing sample quilting. So if you have made up one block and you've done all the quilting on it and you don't feel that it's come in as second nature or comfortable for you yet, make another one and practice again. It's the repetition that helps with getting the flow and the feeling of comfort. So there you go, that's just either side of the seams going one way and that's it on the back. Actually, I've got a silvery grey in the um, bobbin and the cream on the top. So, because the tension's good at the moment on this one, you're not going to see, doesn't pull it through from one to the other. So now I'm going to go horizontally. Again, I'm going to be starting in the middle. My hands, I'm just 
making sure that it stays flat, easing it out. And you're just going to let the walking foot and your machine do its job of taking the fabric through. Do the other side. Once I've done this, I can show you what it looks like with the um, intersection where they cross. There you go. You can just see there's a little square there where it crosses. I can see it better on the reverse here. So you have the others when I do that. So what I'm going to do now, these are pretty much secure because the size, the squares, and the fact that I've done all the horizontal ones. I'm going to take the pins out because I've had enough of catching them on my fingers. Take these up and I'm going to do I've got two more seams to do. If you have any questions about this at all, um, do let me know. Um, put them into the group or send me a message, whichever's easier. And see, found the only pin left in it. Um, and then come and share your pictures in the group as well. Look forward to seeing them. So as you can see, doing it this way, you've got no marking to do because you're using the seams as your guide. And it's also very forgiving. It's far enough away from a seam that it's not drawing attention to it. It is giving your quilt enough stitching lines in to keep all your layers secure. You'll notice on when you buy your wadding it will give recommendations of how far apart your stitching should be. last seam to do. This is the last one that I need to do. Okay, so I'll add a photo onto the page as well so you can actually see that closely. Um, there we 
There we go. There you go. So it gives a nice effect. It's making each of those squares stand out. You're far enough in that you're not going to be affecting the, you're pulling your seams in any direction, one direction. Um, and then there you have it on the back. You've got your knots and crosses board. <laughs> so that is a really effective way of quilting. Um, it is time consuming when it comes to actually doing it. It depends on the size of your quilt. But remember, you haven't got any marking to do beforehand, so it makes up for it there. So that's our first quilting sample. Look forward to seeing you for the next one.